Hello guys, I'm Aloy Andalus from Andy Effects and Effective TVs, and we have a new 3ds Max update, 3ds Max 2019.2. There is a lot of new stuff. We have news in liquids. I will say that motion field is greatly improved. If you ever try to use motion field with the mesh mode that you can attract ob uh, particles to an object normals, it works much better. Now you don't need to have the deflector as well imported on your fluids and a lot of values there has been improved but we will talk about particle loader something that i like a lot and it's something that we really need so if you go to fluids where you have liquid you can create your liquid but before there was no way to move this liquid away clone it or do whatever now we have fluid loader so you can load any fluid you create you create a fluid loader press simulation view and you need to select your fluid loader here so you need to load your cache you add something I create something there I think it's that yes it is so I have this that it's a 3ds and basically it progress like that and the cool thing is that now you can move it around the fluid it's uh, loading using the, um, the transformations of your loader so you can rotate, you can scale, you can do whatever you want uh, if you want to copy it you can copy it no as a normal object and automatically you will see here that you have two fluid loaders uh, if you want to select it and you don't know which one it is which one you can do right click you have you can copy display render settings or you can select object in a scene and automatically will select your fluids loader note that you don't have any information value here all the information value is in your simulation view something that I don't like so much but is like it is um, and you have multiple display settings as well by default I saw this is a small bug vorticity by default doesn't show anything you simply need to select something else and then if you select again vorticity you will have vorticity enabled uh, other things you will see that at the beginning it's maybe a little slow uh, let's turn off real time but the first time will be loading you can see here each fluid loader has a RAM limit when you play it once it will be using the, your RAM so everything will be stored on the RAM on the first pass you can also force it doing load cache, cache from here it's the same so after it loads everything you will see that it's way faster let's wait a little more So now everything is load. So now you can see that it runs in real time and if you can scrap there and it's real fast because it's using it's not loading the cache from your hard drive, it's loading it from your RAM. That's pretty cool. More things that you can do with that. You can add multiple cache and you can offset this cache. So if you select one, you have as well the material ID. If you apply materials, you will you want to have different IDs per object you can do that the cache cache playback you can have the original range you have custom start so you can offset it custom range if you want to change the timing so it will run faster or slower and playback graph let's say that we want to revert this you can add an auto key on frame 60 and on frame 60 it will be 0 so now it will go backwards revealing the 3ds more things that you can do is that you can load multiple caches inside the same fluid loader I animate that Okay. Auto key off. So if you want to load other stuff, you can create a fluid loader if you need to transform them. But if you want 
that, that it use the same transforms, you can simply add the cache on the loader. You add it here, solver, and in my case, it's solver one copy and box of liquid. You can load, uh, it's beef. Beef is the format for Bifrost. Right now, you can only load beef. You cannot load PRTs. I hope that soon you can do it. But you can also load cache, uh, mesh. So if you mesh anything, you can load the mesh. And the cool thing when you load a mesh is that then you can add in top of that modifiers like a bend modifier, path follow modifier, whatever. But you cannot add modifiers in top of the particles. That's kind of unfortunate. So another thing that we have both load, I have 3ds and the max. Let's make them both show vorticity. Both will show vorticity. Something that I don't like so much is that the playback is in independent, so it gives more flexibility, but most of the time I want to animate the playback uh, at the same time. So what we will need to do is to do the same here, playback graph, and now this will be as well frame 60 and this will be frame 0. Now both will be playing backwards. And the cool thing here is that you can use this to retime it, create a slow motion in the middle. So here we have it. 3ds Max. And when we move this, we move both cache at the same time. Another thing that we can do is to clone this. If we want the max below, for example, let's copy. So now we have two fluid loaders. Maybe on the second fluid loader, we only want the max. So we remove the first cache. And on this one, we remove the second cache. So we have individual control with the position of each cache. Here we have it. It gives a lot of flexibility that was not able until now. So I like it quite a lot. Uh, I hope that they introduce, we will be able to load PRTs and other formats, not only by Frost. And Another thing is that we cover more or less all the cache stuff here. There is not so much more to, to know. With right click, you can open the cache location and you can change it if you want. Display settings, you have all the display stuff. Render settings, um, something that I didn't know at the beginning is that, for example, if we you add cache mesh and there is no mesh cache. Let's change the renderer to Arnold. Automatically, we'll try to create a mesh. I think it's like that. I didn't use it uh, for some time now. Uh, if you have a mesh cache and you are loading a mesh, it will load it will render with the cache that you have already saved. But in the case that you are loading uh, particle information, so there is no mesh stored there, uh, it will render with the defaults. The settings for the cache mesh, when you set to cache mesh and there is no mesh, it's on display settings, it's not very straightforward. You need to go to select the display settings to buy frost dynamic mesh. And these settings are the ones used um, for Bifrost to render as mesh when there is no actual mesh on the cache. Um, I hope that it was more straightforward. I didn't show this anywhere and maybe it's not easy to see. So that's all. This gives us a lot of options that we didn't had before. It's not totally ideal for me. Some limitations that you need to know is that when you add multiple caches, by Frost 
doesn't mesh it um, together. So if you have two particles very close and they come from different cache, um, they will not blend together. It will create a mesh for the first cache and another mesh for the second cache. It's something that maybe they will improve it, I hope. And that's all, but you can you can move your cache around, you can play with them, you can add um, different materials, and finally we can, one simple cache, we can copy it around multiple times. Something that I think that it's basic when you deal with particles. And finally we can do, another limitation I found right now is that you cannot instance the, uh, the loader. But, but yeah, pretty powerful new tool for liquids, easy to use. Hope you like it and see you soon guys.